Now, you might remember for years she was the brightly coloured, bubbly captain of <laughs> Team Kick. And while the kicking part hasn't really changed too much, over the past two years or so, we've seen her become one of the stars of the highly credentialed NXT women's division. Now, it is my absolute pleasure to chat to a proud New Zealand export in the WWE. Please welcome my guest, Dakota Kai. Dakota, so good to hey. chat. Hey, thank you for having me. I am, yes, I am the only New Zealander <laughs> in the company. So there's quite, there's quite a lot of weight that comes with that. But yeah, I'm excited to talk. You're doing the job very, very well though. Because <laughs> you've finally got a chance to capture your first NXT Women's Championship at TakeOver 36. Mm -hmm. The thing I absolutely love about this match is we have been there from day dot. Uh, you've been by Raquel Gonzalez's side since you made her first appearance in mm -hmm. NXT. We've seen the very slow burn over the last few months, but with that brings a lot of hype. There's a lot of expectations because I know the WWE Universe has probably been fantasy booking this in their years since <laughs> pretty much you two first popped onto the scene. So how yeah. does that sort of factor <laughs> into your uh, preparation? Um. Yeah, honestly, I, I really like a, a slow burn with anything. I think the stories are just, you know, if you get put with anyone like that, the story's there and, and it's going to be like the longer you drag it out, the better the payoff will be. Um, but you're right. It was uh, Portland of last year that she debuted and we've so been together for over a year. We've done a lot of things, you know, checked a lot of uh bucket list things off in terms of winning the um the first ever women's dusty classic uh holding the um the nxt tag championships even if it was just for an hour we can still claim that we were the first <laughs> um and yeah just done a lot of things together so i think that the the payoff for all of this will be just that much sweeter um you know that's what i do i turn my back on my friends <laughs> so don't trust me <laughs> I am well, the listen, Shawn Michaels of the modern era. <laughs> well, that's what I was just about to bring up because, like, you know, particularly when it comes down to it, like, a great rivalry is what the heartbeat of the WWE is. I mean, we all remember Shawn versus Brett, Austin versus mm -hmm. Rock versus mm -hmm. Lita. More recently, we've got, like, Sasha Banks versus Bailey, or even mm -hmm. Seth Rollins versus Triple H. Now, you've been a part of so many storied rivalries in the WWE, and I will touch on the incredible matches that you had with Tegan Knox, but one mm -hmm. that I think overlooked by a lot of fans in the WWE universe is your feud uh, in the early days with Shayna Baszler. Now, mm -hmm. that was a much different time in your career, but I hope that you realize that fans are absolutely invested. We were really gunning to see you take that belt off, Shayna. So you got pretty <laughs> I, I get told that a lot. Um, well, not a lot, but a lot of people do bring up my my story arc and in particular how it started with Shayna. Um, we both had our first ever singles match on NXT, if everyone remembers. They, they still replay the freaking arm stomp to this day. It will haunt me forever. <laughs> but um, a lot of people still bring it up, you know, like um, the arc of her getting inside my head and overcoming those fears, you know, the, the bully and... I guess the victim story, but it was told in a way that wasn't so like um, obnoxious, I guess as well. I, I really enjoyed it, you know, with the, and, and it was told through other people's stories. So like uh, with Nikki Cross versus Shayna, I was in the background of that. With Ember versus Shayna, I was also, so it was like sprinkled throughout, which I thought was really cool. Um, and it is gutting because I, I did get injured. I, I tore my ACL at the end of 2018 now. So I think that that definitely threw a spanner in the plans of whatever they had. Uh, but the story it was continued to t uh, be told after that. Like we faced, uh, sorry, Raquel and I faced Shayna and Naya for the, um, the WWE Tag Team Championships earlier this year. And we were able to still keep telling that story. So I think with any good storytelling, like you can always keep going back to it. And I think that's the beauty of it all you know like maybe the story's not over maybe there is more to be told with whoever it is that i'm against and that was the, that was what made that match so good that we we're able to sort of dip back into your history together but um i feel like war games 2019 was where you sort of really announced yourself to the world i mean it was also your first takeover as well uh take us back to that event i mean what was that like for you because this is a mate this was the the sean michaels marty Gennady barbershop window moment for you and it gets yeah <laughs> times so what was that like for you man i i remember when um 
Triple H pulled all of the girls that were involved in that match aside because it was very, very special for all of us. It was the first ever women's war games match. So we had a lot to live up to. We wanted to make sure that, you know, we put on an absolute banger of a match, first of all. And like, there was a lot of high expectations for us. And I think that the match itself delivered, but he pulled me in particular aside and told me about uh, what was going to happen and what we were all building to. And this was a good, like, I want to say six weeks before War Games itself. So we laid out, you know, all the um, the weeks leading up to that takeover. And I remember feeling like on the actual day of War Games, I, I know that the only thing I really had to do wasn't like, like it wasn't a match, but it was a very key part of of that match, if that makes any sense, you know, like the, the it was one of the most important things of uh, that we had to tell. Like, and I don't know the the vibes in like backstage before doing all of this. Like, it was it was crazy. It was it was it was definitely a big moment for me because you, you're right. That is the first real time that I kind of broke out away from everything else and made a, a bigger name for myself in terms of uh, turning on poor little Tegan. <laughs> and the, and the, the worst part too is because it really played into the emotion. I mean, we knew about, first off, we know your history together. I mean, you, you had that brief little run, even in NXT as the team mm-hmm. fly kicks. And it was just so cool to see, you know, with the matching gear and everything, you guys were besties and it was just so awesome. So <laughs> it really did rip the heart out of all the WWE universe where we saw it. But, but another cool thing is because you guys have that history, Street, that led to an incredible amount of matches which culminated obviously at the huge street fight and that was a match like maybe people in the wwe that haven't seen your pre nxt career didn't know that that's a notch that you can sort of go up to and did you feel like that mm-hmm. street fight was something else that sort of went and stamped your authority like no no i'm not just the smiley bubbly girl that keeps people <laughs> in the but like i can do a lot more yeah for sure and uh, for both of us too um you know Tegan was on the independent scene before and we both hadn't really been given opportunity of a match of that caliber, you know, a street fight. So when we went into it, we wanted to make sure that we were um, just raising the bar in terms of what women can do in wrestling. Um, We wanted to, you know, tell the story, make sure we got all those moments in, but we also wanted to make sure that we beat the holy heck out of each other. (laughs) And, I think that's the beauty of going into a story with someone that you're genuinely close with because it's a thing that's been said in sports ent- entertainment. The closer you are with someone that you're feuding against, the harder you're going to hit because you just trust them, they trust you, and you wouldn't want to put your life in the hands of anyone else. Like, it, or, I mean, you know what I mean? Like the closer you are with someone, the more you trust them. So we had a series of good matches yeah that street fight in particular we also had the cage match too where we did the same thing and um i think we managed to um pull it off i'm I'm very proud of that match actually oh and and you rightfully should be too i mean and since then you've been in multiple takeovers you've even been in the royal rumble as well but uh with the history that takeover has in nxt i mean we've got like we look back at the it's a brief history but it's still a pretty big one i mean we've got Mm -hmm. the four horsewomen matches the insane ladder matches war games which you're a part of as well so with takeover 36 now this is one of the marquee matches so when you see yourself in one of the main events of a takeover i mean what's that like for you it's again it's one of those things where um you know before i was signed with nxt i i saw these takeovers and they were really just growing in popularity and and the women during that time you know your sasha uh bailey page they were putting on absolute uh bangers of matches so the bar was definitely raised so to be on any takeover um it means a lot but there's also a lot of responsibility that comes with that because you want to uphold the the reputation of what the women's division has uh, basically done throughout the years, you know, um, and the trailblazers, they were trailblazers for a reason. And we just got to keep raising the bar and, and making sure that we put on something that we can be proud of and that the fans can be proud of too. Yeah. And I've got to say, like, I remember when the first year of takeovers, it was just like, wow, well, every show is really, really good. And now we're mm-hmm. 30 takeovers into it and i don't think anyone has ever said oh man that was a pretty that was a pretty bad takeover like the bar just keeps, 
more and more and more. So especially when you're in such a, a high profile match, you must be like, oh, geez. <laughs> and, our, <laughs> and with the other, the other matches on the card too, like you got Ela versus Walter and like there, there are so many amazing <laughs> matches on this card too. I mean, like every card has amazing matches, but this one's like, this is intense. So I think that will definitely uh, push Raquel and I to make sure that we um, up our game and leave everything out there. Now we touched on this at the start when I um, started talking to you now, but there, there have been a number of Australians in the WWE that have made their mark on the company, won championships, and you are the sole New Zealand representative at the moment. So mm-hmm. I'll ask you, how, how proud are you to fly the flag for NZ? And more importantly too, do you think it's just a matter of time before more talented Kiwis make their way to the WWE? Because for a long time, I, I remember when Nathan Jones was the only person <laughs> from Australia, and this is like going back to 2003. So. Yeah. It's like an influx. So do you think it's just a matter of time before we see some of the great talents that, that New Zealand has to offer make their way to the WWE? Oh, absolutely. Um, I know there's a load of guys and girls that are really making a name for themselves right now on the independent scene. You know, you've got Jay White in uh, New Japan. Um, it's It really is only a matter of time. Uh, I think because of the fact that like, New Zealand's such a little country on the other side of the world, it's like, I, I personally found it not the harder, but you really do have to put your all in terms of like traveling, you know, getting your name out there and making sure that you're seen. I think that's the only real thing, but there's like a lot of talented people back home. So I hope that I won't be the only one here for too much longer, <laughs> but, but waving the flag really does give me a sense of pride knowing that I'm the only one right now because um, I want to make sure that I make them all proud back home. But, it would be nice if I, you know, had some Kiwi company. I always do get lumped in with the Australians a lot of the time, <laughs> which I, is fine. And- I love Australia. I, I, they gave me a lot of great, like, uh, independent matches and they did welcome me in, with open arms too. So, And not only that too, I mean, the, the more success you have, we're just going to claim you anyway. So <laughs> I always get told that. It's fine. <laughs> um, now, last but not least, this isn't a question, more for a request, but it's a very wrestling thing for groups to fight and break up, but please, please, please make sure nothing ever, ever happens to the BRE because that is one of my, high, my, my weekly highlights. So I would hate I if see anything your ever shirt. I see your shirt. <laughs> no, no, that, that's a separate universe right there. We're fine. We're, we're roommates for life. So, you know, but I mean, Again, you can't really trust me. I mean, <laughs> I've ha- I haven't really had the best <laughs> reputation of being a trustworthy friend. So, <laughs> well, well, either way, it's been an absolute pleasure to chat to you. And Dakota Kai challenges Raquel Gonzalez for the NXT Women's Championship. NXT Takeover 36 streams live Saturday, 21st October. Uh, oh, sorry, 21st August at <laughs> midday in at New Zealand. That'll be uh, 10 p.m. here in Australia on the WWE Network. But Dakota Kai, it's been an absolute pleasure. All the best to take her, and hopefully this won't be the last time I chat to you. I hope not, Nims. Thank you for having me. That was that was fun. <laughs>